This is the Dun Wyvern side quest prototype I tested a year and three months ago, and I said I was part of something special. I've been invited to a small group testing out some betas or prototypes of this one-handed keyboard, and I'm in direct communication with the gentleman designing these devices to give my feedback. I feel like I'm part of something special. See? I did say that. I've had my hands on the finalized unit for about a month, and it was fantastic to see that the feedback that I gave Matt on my initial review have been implemented in the final product, such as mechanical switches that are now hot swappable, but still rock those same Gateron low profile joints. But now they're hot swappable, so if you don't like them, you're not stuck with that linear... But having said that, the stock switches are not bad at all for linear switches. Gotta caveat it with that. For linear switches. I know linear lovers, you hate me, I'm sorry, but I just I personally don't like them. IMO. Give me tactiles or clickies or to give, to give me no switches. Give me empty sockets, I guess. Okay, that's a little bit extreme. The software, unfortunately, has been virtually untouched from the prototype or beta that I tested, but every hardware tweak I would have liked to have seen, such as a rubberized pad for the palm, better feeling keycaps, and a thumbstick that is leagues better than that prototype joint. That little stick or shaft I was diddling in the first one had no anti-friction rings and made a hollow tinny click when I clicked it in, which by the way is very hard to do on a one-handed keyboard because unlike a traditional controller which you're holding out in front of you like this and you have all this thumb muscle in there all that cartilage ready to click down on the sticks it doesn't really take much force with a one-handed keyboard it really does because you're actually moving your hand like that and uh, if you don't have the muscle built up in here it can be cumbersome to click down those sticks and i know this intro is starting to become cumbersome because it's running long so let's put the finished version of the side quest two variants the black and the clear they actually have special names but I'm gonna call it like it is black and clear we're gonna put those side by side with that 3d printed prototype bad boy that beta back alley joint I tested out about a year ago and find out what has changed and what is the same and would I recommend it at the price point for a one-handed keyboard let's get it quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this keyboard was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any con, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it, so these companies make better products over time. And speaking of which, all my feedback was listened to by the team over there and implemented on the final version, which is super sick. Let's check it out. The switches on board are Cherry MX Low Profile RGBs, which just means it has the clear housing. They are going to be linear switches, which I'm not a huge fan of. However, for a one-handed keyboard or any kind of a hitbox, a fight pad, anything like that, linear switches work phenomenally. For a typing slash productivity keyboard, not so much in my opinion. The tech specs, such as the operating force, pre and post Post travel is on screen. Well, no post travel, but you've got the total travel. So I guess you subtract the pre-travel from that and you have the total travel. God, we're so smart here. Fuck. And here's something that doesn't compute because my processor isn't fast enough. A big con is the fact that the cord is permanently attached, but since you can't remove it and bring your own to the party, if you wanted something a little bit longer, or God forbid, if this thing gets damaged, you got to buy a whole new keyboard. The only button that feels worse or feels about the same, but definitely sounds worse is going to be the profile switch button. It is now audibly a lot louder and has kind of a hollow tinny rattling around in the body sound, but everything else from the switches to the surface plastics that make contact with your hand, there's now a rubber strip, and what's most important here, the biggest upgrade is going to be the thumbstick, which unless I'm just taking crazy pills over here, feels like it has about 30% more resistance and definitely feels a lot more secure. The rubber or silicone compound on the actual cap is a lot more grippy to the point you don't really need any thumbstick cap add-ons like Control Freaks, which is good because none are compatible with this, but if you do really want some, there are are universal slipovers from Play Vital and Extreme Rate. One of the biggest differences that not everyone's going to notice, but you sure as shit are the first time you're up against the thumbstick gates at full lock, and that is the fact there is now an anti-friction ring, so you get this nice smooth plastic that you glide along, a feature you usually see on Pro controllers, and it's really cool to see that on a one-handed keyboard as well. It'd be kind of sick if there was a little D-pad next to the analog stick. I don't know how the hell that would be implemented, but th th that'd be cool to have that additional input. Maybe in lieu of these three buttons around them, I understand the one underneath it is probably going to be bound to spacebar for jumping and whatnot, but the two off to the sides, maybe those could go and then have the analog stick closer to the palm grip to the left that would free up that entire right area for a D-pad. That'd be kind of, you know, I'm just spitballing here. Ergonomically, this has got to be one of the most, if not the most comfortable one-handed keyboard I've used, and I have used almost all of them on the market. The majority of them are from Razer, but there are some other companies out there, like some cheapos you'll find on Amazon, and I've tested a slew of those as well. 
well. And the ergonomics on this side quest are much better. Part of that is you have this really aggressive dip, which is almost like a half pipe. And you think that would be not comfortable, but you can actually access all of the keys pretty effortlessly. And now that you have this rubber or silicone strip, you have a nice place to rest your palm. And that does feel really soft and supple. Dun Wyvern was kind enough to send out two of these bad boys. I don't know why my voice cracked like that. I got super excited, but two of them, a clear one and a black one. I'm going to keep that clear variant for myself because it's, it's supremely sensual. The black one, which is also super randy, is going to get sent out to one of you. The first stallion or stallionette that types side quest down there. Keep it simple. We'll be receiving the black one sent out from your boy here. Well, it's from Dun Wyvern. Then, then I'm the middleman here and then I'm giving it to you. So thank them. Thank me. Thank it. Thank yourself for being in the right time at the right place and being fast with the keyboard. They heard me mention that the only button that didn't sound as good as the prototype, in my personal opinion, was the profile swap button. But I want you to be the judge. This is going to be a sound check of the prototype and the finalized version. Things like the keycaps, the thumbstick. One thing to make note of on the thumbstick is around the outside of the gates. You now have smooth plastic instead of you'll actually hear rough plastic without that anti-friction ring. But all the buttons sound a lot more secure, quieter, better overall on the finalized version. Give it a listen. In order to get the software application, you are going to go to the Dunwavern homepage, and in the top right, you are going to see downloads, and you are going to see three options based on platform. Windows, this will work on 10 and 11. Mac x86, which is going to be your Intel CPU Macintoshes, and then your M1 Silicon Johns. For example, the M3 laptop that I purchased recently and haven't talked about on the channel much. An absolute beast, that Apple Silicon. Now, on the Windows side of the house, this is now an officially licensed piece of software. It is called Command Console, Dunwavern Command Console. So you're not going to pop any warnings as viruses. However, I am part of the Google Advanced Protection Program, as I do have a Google account that is associated to a YouTube channel. Sure as heck don't want to get hacked. Besides losing all my Gmail nudes and whatnot, I'd have to worry about this old channel, and that's my that's my baby. So this was warned as a unverified piece of software. Not, not a malicious piece of shit, but just, hey, we can't really verify this because it's not a commonly downloaded piece of software. And I said, you know what? I'm not a common kind of guy. Click it, and here I am standing tall and proud without a virus. I have it pinned down to the taskbar for easy access. And just like the previous prototype version, the beta, if you will, there is no presets loaded in here. So unlike a Razer that already have a little preset where it's usually going to be the left side of your full size keyboard, where you're going to have WASD movement keys, control and space bar and all that good stuff. You don't have anything bound by default with the side quest. It's not the most sensual experience. I'd like if you could just highlight, click, and then press on the keyboard, uh, but it doesn't work like that come over here to name. So I'll just name this Q and then command. Yeah, it's going to be key Q as well. Hit save. And then you drag that over from the command list. I was really hoping that command console would get a little bit more um, easier to navigate or browse than the prototype version. And lo and behold, it's the same thing. Now, once you've made your changes, you have everything bound, hit activate, and that will flash it to that particular profile. Keep in mind, you do have three profiles that you can swap on the fly. Unfortunately, the command list is not shared amongst all of your profiles. So I'd like if the default crossed over to Kevin and you had Q, but I have to rebind that over here. Now, the movement keys are grayed out around the thumbstick or analog stick, and that is by default because this is going to be movement, which is probably what you want that stick for is to move your character around to run like you have a gamepad plugged in. That's one of the main perks or benefits of going with a one-handed keyboard is because you usually have an analog niblet, which gives you more control than the WASD keys. Over here on the manufacturer's website, Dunwyvern Gaming, and the only product that they currently sell and maybe are only ever going to sell is the side quest. Hey, shit, it ain't the side quest. It's the main story campaign. But there's something that tickles me in the wrong gamer nether region, so to speak. And that is the current asking price. 
Matt Smith, not just a strong jawline, but also a really talented engineer when it comes to designing these one nano keyboards. Now, if you search Google for SideQuest keyboard, you're going to see Dunwyvern Gaming over here. And this is the shop tab, which is separate from the website we were just looking at. This is where you can actually buy these bad boys. The two color options are Obsidian, which is the black, and Crystal, which is the, the clear. I personally think this one-handed keyboard should go for $199.99 or $200, which I know is a, a steep get discount from what they're currently asking for this keyboard. The reason I say that is a one-handed keyboard is such a niche gaming accessory, or if you're going to use this for anything outside of gaming, maybe it would be editing, but there's better tools for that as well, such as cheaper one-handed keyboards with knobs and dials specifically for editing software. But you're probably going to use this for gaming, so the most common one-handed keyboards on the market and have been for a long time is going to be from Razer. I've done a couple of comparisons of their models on the channel. Some of them I like, some of them I really like, one of them I really don't. And all of those except the Tartarus, which I do believe the Tartarus actually might be in this camp now as well, have been discontinued and have been for quite a while now. Why I say that is I was just on the Razer website and you can click through the little sales funnel, but then when you get to the end where you're actually going to buy it, it just doesn't let you. But anywho, diddly you, there's a ton of generic little, well, this isn't generic, this has a brand, but there's these cheaper options such as Red Dragon, Red Thunder, which do a lot of the same shit and already come bound to that side of the keyboard to where you don't need that cumbersome setup process of having to drag in each individual key binding and then mapping what you want your analog stick to be, which luckily in most launchers, Steam included, the analog stick just was mapped to a left analog stick for character movement. Now, where I think the price might be a little bit warranted, still not fully, this is where I think it should be $200, but where I think it offers a feature that the competitors do not is going to be full compatibility with PC, Mac, Xbox, and PlayStation. The Razer one-handed keyboards only work with PC, specifically Windows PCs. They don't have Mac support and they sure as shit don't have console support, not without the use of a converter or adapter like from Brook Accessories. But then there's a juicy caveat right here with this asterisk, this little star in the sky, that in order to use it on Xbox and PlayStation, you still need to have a computer for storing custom profiles. And keep in mind, when you plug this bad boy in to your front of your Xbox or PlayStation, there's nothing bound. The buttons aren't going to do anything until you make your custom profiles. I would like it if it was more transparent or existed at all. Some kind of a warranty policy page, a refund and warranty policy page. So it's clear cut periodic time frame. We offer a six month or one year warranty. So what I recommend the Dun Wyvern side quest at $290, I do believe that is a little bit steep of an asking price. If it was say, around the $200 mark, it would be a little bit more appetizing, but still such a niche product. If you're buying a one handed keyboard, you know exactly what you're getting it for. You probably have an MMO in mind that you want to bind all your spells to over here, but you still want that smooth analog stick so you can run your mage ass around and sling your sorcery. Now, what I've always recommended these one-handed keyboards for is actually going to be shooters. When you're making that transition from console to PC, maybe you built your first gaming PC or you bought a pre-built and you're trying to get used to keyboard and mouse, still having that analog stick movement, but just focusing on the aiming of a mouse can really help to where you're not focusing on, oh God, my movement's now on four buttons and to sprint, I have to dislocate my pinky and hit shift. And then to jump, I have to schwack the space bar. I'm making it seem like it's so, so much harder than it really is. Once you get used to it, it's second nature. For the first six months or so, it is not going to feel like second nature and having a little ergonomic one-handed keyboard like what's offered from Razer or Dun Wyvern here is super convenient. Really cool one-handed keyboard and it was awesome to be part of the, the development process or a very small part. I mean, my part was just, hey, I would like to see hot swappable switches added and then my lazy ass kicks back while they're actually on the grind over there building these keyboards and doing the R&D and whatnot. My feedback was definitely listened to. Everything that I mentioned was addressed. The software suite's still the same, which is kind of stinky, but that can be changed at any time. The app can be changed with a patch or update or they could even even introduce a different app, like a new one altogether. I mean, who knows? The side quest is linked in the description below. Drop in the comment section below what you think of this bad boy. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So molly that subscribe button like it owes you money and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow.